Hello beautiful people and welcome to another video. In this one I'll be working on this absolutely ginormous piece of furniture. It's definitely the biggest set of drawers I've ever worked on. I think this is called architect's drawers, something that people store blueprints or maps in and I had to make two trips in order to buy this because it wouldn't fit in my car. Unfortunately, this was not constructed out of solid wood. Most of it was particle board or chipboard, whatever you want to call it, and some pieces of solid oak. The veneer on it was in a really bad shape and I wanted to replace it as soon as I saw it. I only decided to work on this project knowing how expensive it was going to be to buy the veneer and everything else is because I wanted to keep it for myself. I didn't have anyone to help me move this and as you can see even one of those drawers was almost as big as me. And every time I wanted to move it or do something with it I had to take it apart and move it one drawer at a time. That's how heavy it was. It's swollen in some places. I think there was some water damage. I mean obviously there's million stains so and I think there's no way to remove the veneer without getting some of the board with it because it's glued. I actually tried to unscrew this and flip it upside down and use the underside but it's not gonna work because um, it's not flat. Removing the veneer from it would be a huge pain and I think a lot of the chipboard would just come off with the veneer so I would just end up with lots of gouges all over it. So I think I'm just gonna remove everything that's loose, sand it roughly, I'll fill all the low spots with wood filler and I think I'll apply a piece of very thin plywood with veneer on top of it or maybe just veneer. I think this is the most reasonable way to fix it without replacing the whole thing. I sanded the top with 80 grit sandpaper to remove any pieces of loose veneer and high spots from swollen chipboard. My plan is to cut off most of this trim. I want to leave a little bit of this uh, solid wood glued to the MDF, make it more rigid and keep this edge from like crumbling. I hope there's no nails or screws in it because I can't see any, but we're about to find out. <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest of them. When I was done with that, I went to my favorite supplier to pick up some flexible cherry veneer. I've used many other veneers from them before but this was the first time I was actually getting cherry and I thought it would be nice to try something new. And so far this was about $260 and unfortunately it turned out that two sheets of veneer was not enough so I had to go back and get another one. And including the cost of the instant cement which was about $50, probably a bit more plus the $120 that I paid for this on Facebook Marketplace, it's over $500 already. <laughs> Anyhow, so we know this is gonna be super expensive, but that's okay. There was some sort of lock that was attached to the set of drawers, but it didn't come with them. So I had to do something about those cutouts because I was going to cover them with veneer. They didn't need to be perfect because as I mentioned I was going to cover them with veneer but they had to be flush with the surface. And I did exactly the same thing for the bottom half of this piece because if you haven't noticed this actually consists of two separate pieces that you just stack on top of each other. 
and you might have noticed that there was a hole in the top where the lock would go into so I had to cut a piece of wood to basically fill in that hole And of course, as always, there was a lot of sanding. I was actually considering making a different base or different legs for this piece, but because how long it is and because it's not made of solid wood, it would definitely sag in the middle. So the base that was on it actually made sense, so I just left it. The back panels were actually in a decent condition, there was some mold on them and they were super dirty so I just cleaned them with white spirit and I used vinegar to get rid of the mold. Meow. What's up? And I guess I had done enough work for the day so it was time for a cat break. Come to inspect my project, huh? I'll give you a snack. By the way, these snacks were sent by one of you guys, so thank you, the cats appreciate it. After a good clean and some vinegar to get rid of the mold, I applied Restore a Finish and I was pretty happy with how the panels looked. I did some trimming and some sanding. And then I had to fix the base because the joints needed regluing. But because the base was attached to the bottom with screws and one of the screws was actually broken, so I had to cut it in order to take this piece out and glue it back in place. always like to make sure that everything is nice and clean on the inside and underneath but because this was so huge it took forever I got there in the end and it was finally time to apply the veneer I didn't actually realize I was cutting through both sheets of veneer because I forgot that I bought two but it's okay because it was actually the same length as what I was gonna need for the drawers so that's fine. I used some tape to make sure I didn't make a mess before I applied the contact cement. This was actually my first time using this one and it has gel consistency and what's good about this one is that when it's dry and you're about to put the veneer on before you actually press it down, you can move it around a little bit. It doesn't stick to the other side right away, so this just allows you, you know, to make mistakes and it's beginner friendly. As you can see, I'm wearing a mask and you absolutely have to wear it because it stinks like death. It's just so <laughs> terrible. And even with the mask on, I was able to smell it a little bit. So make sure you do it in a well ventilated area. One eternity later. With contact cement you only need to wait 5-10 minutes until it's dry to the touch before you can actually apply the veneer. And the reason I'm using those pieces of wood 
is so it doesn't stick to the bottom until I'm happy with the placement. So what I'm doing now, I'm basically removing the middle pieces and I'm pressing it down so it sticks in the middle and it doesn't move and I'm just gonna work my way out towards the edges. You can buy special rollers that you can apply the veneer with but this is just a tool that I made myself and the contact area allows you to apply more pressure with this tool than a roller so it's actually better. When the veneer was in place and I knew it was not going to go anywhere, I applied pressure throughout the entire surface and I made sure that I didn't miss anything. When I was happy with the veneer, I used my router with a trim bit and I trimmed all the edges and then I sanded them smooth. When you're applying veneer you should use white spirit or water and strong bright light to check for any bubbles or scratches before you actually apply stain or finish or whatever you're doing with it. When I was done with the top, I cut many more pieces for the sides, the drawers and I made my own edge bending rather than buying because it was quite expensive and I had a lot of veneer anyway. Applying contact cement is not difficult but it does take a while and you want to make sure that you don't make a mess otherwise you have a lot of cleaning up to do. I know that some people find working with veneer quite intimidating but as you can see it's not and if you think about it, you plan it and you use the tools that you're comfortable with, it's actually pretty simple. You can use regular wood glue, just wait for it to dry and then use an iron to reactivate it and instead of using a router you can just use a scalpel or a sharp knife. And as you can see I'm using a scalpel right here and it works. You can just sand it a little bit afterwards and it's fine. You don't need to use power tools if you're not comfortable with it. As I just mentioned before, I made my own edge bending and this is pretty simple. You don't need to cut it to the exact size because you can always trim it or you can just sand the edges. And the reason I'm using tape on the front of those pieces is so none of the contact cement gets on it and I won't have to worry about cleaning it.
this is just to show you how huge this was and every time I wanted to work on one of the pieces I had to move the other ones around and it was like the game of Tetris the fronts of the doors needed replaning because the veneer was just gone in some places and even the substrate was missing on few of them so I didn't have hand electric planer and I had to use this one so it was a bit sketchy but it worked I took most of the veneer off with the planer and I finished it off with a sander and then I used wood filler to fill in the holes from the previous hardware As I mentioned, some of the substrate on some of the drawers was missing, so I had to make small repairs just to make sure there was something for the veneer to adhere to. Two thousand years later. I actually found this on one of the drawers, just in case you're curious who made this. And after all that sanding, which took absolutely forever, I was able to apply veneer to the drawer front. I cleaned all the drawers on the outside and everywhere else other than inside, and I'm going to do this later off camera. The process is exactly the same, you apply the veneer, you trim it, you sand it and I was able to finish all the drawers. At this point you're pretty much a veneer pro, so you know exactly what I'm going to do, so I don't need to explain it, but I do want to say a huge thank you to all of you beautiful people for supporting the channel for buying snacks for the cats, using my Amazon wishlist, hitting the super thanks button or buying me coffees via buy me a coffee. It really makes a huge difference and I'm not just saying that, I really mean it and I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't for you guys, so thank you and huge thank you to the channel members, you guys are awesome. I can't even assemble this in my shop because there's not enough space. If I put it like this, I won't be able to put the drawers in. If I turn it this way, I won't be able to access it from the side. So <laughs> I have to go outside, but there's a high chance it's gonna rain today. And this is just heavy and really difficult to move by myself. So that's gonna be tricky. Like I said, this was really heavy. If it starts raining right now, I'm screwed. I did some final sanding with 180 grit sandpaper and I used my gazebo just in case it was going to rain. So from this point on, I had to finish everything outside and it's been raining for like a month in England so that's not great for applying finishes and stains. I was going to apply a line of gilding wax in the middle and the cut inspector came to approve it. I get an okay from the inspector and I apply gilding wax 
and as you can see this line was basically asking for something like that and I thought it was cool. I really can't make up my mind, I'm just testing some stains, so this is Jacobean, dark mahogany, this is black, this is plum mahogany, and this is walnut, and definitely not black, but I think I kind of like the rest of them, <laughs> so I think I would be happy with any of these four colors, I really don't know. Well, I went with plum mahogany, and I know that at least one of you is going to hate it, Linda. But I'm going to keep this for myself and I really like this color. So the way I'm applying the stain, I've done it on smaller projects and it worked really well. But because this was so huge, uh, it just wasn't perfect. So it was a bit blotchy, but I actually did another coat of stain, which I diluted with alcohol to even it out and make it pretty. So everything worked out just fine. I think this is gonna be a very controversial decision. <laughs> I'm, I haven't done the top coat yet, obviously, but I put the drawers in. And because the veneer is different, because you know, it came from two different sheets of veneer, I don't want to stain the drawers. I kind of like them. And because I'm gonna keep this, I think I'm not gonna stain the drawers. Might be crazy, but I like it. So this is me applying this stain that was diluted and it really helped to even out the color and make everything look nice. And working on such a large surface, I probably could have used something like pre-stain conditioner or something like that to make sure it was a bit easier to apply the stain, but it was okay. I let this stain dry overnight, I applied my logo and when I came back I attached the size to the gazebo so I could actually apply the finish and not worry too much about the rain and wind and everything else. Because I didn't stain the drawers, I decided to use two different oils and for the stain parts I used Osmo, mainly because if I used Odis it would have cost me a fortune. There are a few small imperfections that I'm going to fix later but I want to apply the finish first and wait for it to dry so I know exactly the color that I need. I was quite happy with how it was looking. I left it to dry and I applied all these dark to the fronts of the drawers. The veneer that I applied came from two different sheets of veneer, so it was two different tones. So I basically used it in a way to make it look more even or spaced out, so it's one light, one dark, and you know, you can see what it is. And I actually quite liked it. The project is nearly finished and what a journey this has been. If you guys have enjoyed this video, you can smash the super thanks button or buy me coffee via buy me coffee. I'll love you forever and enjoy the final results. See you in the next video.